Good morning. Today is Tuesday already. Boy, lovely day out there. I was out in my garden doing some watering and I don't think it froze last night, which is kind of nice. Lovely day, but Grandma Diane here. Welcome to Grandma Diane's Storytime. And today our book is Old Bear by Jane Hissey. Jane has written a number of books about Old Bear, but this is the first one. Um, and it's, so it's kind of fun to read that one first and then get to know the character a little bit. Look at the picture in the back here, too. They're good <laughs> friends, all of these stuffed animals. So, Okay, are we ready? Old Bear by Jane Hissey. Okay, tell me when I'm good here. Looks good. I like to look at the end pages, as you know, and uh, I think this one is really cute with all the different characters dancing around. Oh, and once again, uh, way back in 1989, that probably was before a lot of you were born, um, Jane Hissey was in Hastings visiting our school, and I had her sign my book, Old Bear. So again, it's another signed book from my library. Old Bear by Jane Hissey. If there's only one name on the on the book like that, does what does that mean? Does anybody know? I hope you're saying that she wrote the story and drew the pictures, because that is the case with Jane Hissey. It wasn't anybody's birthday, but Bramwell Brown had a feeling that today was going to be a special day. He was sitting thoughtfully on the windowsill with his friends, Duck, Rabbit, and Little Bear, when he suddenly remembered that someone wasn't there who should be. A very long time ago, his good friend, Old Bear, being, oh, I'm sorry, let me start that page again. A very long time ago, he had seen his good friend, Old Bear, being packed away in a box. Then he was taken up a ladder, through a trap door, and into the attic. The children were being too rough with him, and he needed somewhere safe to go for a while. Hmm. I hope you don't ever get too rough with your toys. Has he been forgotten, do you think? Bramwell asks his friends. I think he might have been, said Rabbit. Well, said Little Bear, isn't it time he came back down with us? The children are older now and would look after him properly. Let's go and get him. What a marvelous idea, said Bramwell. But how can we rescue him? It's a long way up to the attic and we haven't got a ladder. We could build a tower of blocks, suggested Little Bear. Rabbit collected all the blocks and the others set about building the tower. It grew very tall and Little Bear was just putting on the last block when the tower began to wobble. Look out, he cried as the whole thing came tumbling down. Never mind, said Bramwell, helping Little Bear to his feet. We'll just have to think of something else. That's good problem solving, isn't it? Let's try making ourselves into a tower, said Duck. Good idea, said Bramwell. Little Bear climbed on top of Rabbit's head and Rabbit hopped onto Duck's beak. They stretched up as far as they could, but then Duck opened his beak to say something. Rabbit wobbled and they all collapsed on top of Bramwell. Sorry, said Duck, perhaps that wasn't a very good idea. Not one of your best, replied Bramwell from somewhere underneath the heap. I know, said Rabbit. Let's try bouncing on the bed. Trust you to think of that, said Bramwell. You never can resist a bit of bouncing, especially when it's not allowed. Rabbit climbed onto the bed and began to bounce up and down. The others joined him. They bounced higher and higher, but they still couldn't reach the trap door in the ceiling. Duck began to cry. Oh dear, he sobbed. What are we going to do now? 
We'll never be able to rescue old bear and he'll be stuck up there getting lonelier and lonelier forever and ever. We mustn't give up, said Bramwell firmly. Come on, little bear, you're good at ideas. But little bear had already noticed the plant in the corner of the room. Hmm. Oh my, I've got it, he cried. I could climb up this plant, swing from the leaves, kick the trap door open and jump in. In case it wobbled, Bramwell Brown, duck and rabbit steadied the pot. Little Bear bravely climbed up the plant until he reached the very top leaf. He took hold of it and started to swing to and fro, but swung so hard that the leaf broke and he went crashing down. Luckily, Bramwell Brown was right underneath to catch him in his paws. That was a rotten idea, said Little Bear. What I was thinking, said Duck, was that it's a pity I can't fly very well, as I could have been quite a help. Aha, said Bramwell. That's my dear Duck. <clears throat> have gi you have given me a very good idea. I really think this one might work. Oh, this sounds scary to me. In the corner of the playroom was a little wooden airplane with a propeller that went round and round. We could use this plane to get to the trap door, said Bramwell. Rather dangerous, I know, but quite honestly, I can't bear to think of old bear up there alone for, for a minute longer. I'll be a pilot, said Rabbit, hopping up and down, making airplane noises, and I'll stand on the back and push the trap door open with my paintbrush, said Little Bear. But how will you get down, asked Duck. I've already thought of that, said Bramwell, who hadn't really, but quickly did. They can use these handkerchiefs as parachutes, and we'll catch them in a blanket. Oh dear, do you think that's going to work? Bramwell gave Little Bear two big handkerchiefs and a flashlight so he could see into the attic. Then he began to wind up the propeller of the plane. Rabbit and Little Bear climbed aboard, and Bramwell began the countdown. Five, four, three, two, one, zero. They were off. The plane whizzed along the carpet and flew up into the air. He's got his paintbrush ready. The little plane flew beautifully, and the first time they passed the trap door, Little Bear was able to push the lid open with his paintbrush. Then Rabbit circled the plane again, this time very close to the hole. Little Bear grabbed the edge, and with a mighty heave, he pulled himself inside. He got out his flashlight and looked around. The attic was very dark and quiet, full of boxes, old clothes, and dust. He couldn't see Old Bear at all. Any bears in here? He whispered and stood still to listen. From somewhere quite near, he heard a muffled brrrr, followed by, did somebody say something? Little Bear moved a few things aside, and there, propped up against a cardboard box and covered in dust, was Old Bear. Hmm, poor Old Bear. Oh, there's the inside of the attic. Wow. Here's Old Bear over here. Looks like he's been reading, trying to pass the time. <laughs> reading is a good way to pass time when you're lonely. Little Bear jumped up and down with excitement. Old Bear, Old Bear, I found Old Bear, he shouted. So you have, said Old Bear. Have you been lonely, asked Little Bear. Quite lonely, said Old Bear, but I've been asleep a lot of the time. Well, said Little Bear kindly, would you like to come back to the playroom with us now? That would be lovely, replied Old Bear, but how will we get down? Don't worry about that, said Little Bear. Bramwell has thought of everything. He's given us these handkerchiefs to use as parachutes. Hmm. Good old Bramwell, said the old teddy. I'm glad he didn't forget me. Old Bear stood up and shook the dust out of his fur, and Little Bear helped him into his parachute. They went over to the hole in the ceiling. Ready, shouted Rabbit. Steady, shouted Duck. Go, shouted Bramwell Brown. The two bears leapt bra bravely from the hole in the ceiling. Their handkerchief parachutes opened out and they floated gently down, landing safely in the blanket. 
Welcome home, old bear, said Bramwell Brown, patting his friend on the back. The others patted him too, just to make him feel safe at home. It's nice to have you back, they said. Oh, it's nice to be back, replied old bear. There he is with all his buddies. I think they kind of like each other. What do you think? That night, when all the animals were tucked in bed, Bramwell thought about the day's adventures and looked at the others. Rabbit was dreaming exciting dreams about bouncing as high as an airplane. Duck was dreaming that he could really fly and was rescuing bears from all sorts of high places. Little Bear was dreaming of all the interesting things he had seen in the attic. And Old Bear was dreaming about the good times he would have now that he was back with friends. I knew it was going to be a special day, said Bramwell Brown to himself. And that's the end of the story. How exciting. So what do you think? Is that a real story? Do you think those animals really could get up there and fly an airplane and get into the attic and get down safely with handkerchiefs? Uh, I don't think so either, but isn't it fun to read? That's called fantasy. And we know that fantasy really can't happen, but it's fun to read and it's fun to, to think about and dream about like the bears are doing in the, in the story. So that's our story time for today. Um, we have another good book coming up for you tomorrow, so tune back in again, and we will see you soon. Bye, everyone.